Hi everyone, in this video we're going to be doing the geometry study guide. So in this study guide we're going to go over three different sections. Uh, the first section is 2D shapes, so we're going to be looking at some formulas for two-dimensional shapes, so things like triangles, circles, squares, stuff like that. Uh, and then we're going to move to three-dimensional shapes, spheres, cubes, cylinders, you know, stuff like that. Uh, and uh, then lastly, we're going to spend a little extra time on the Pythagorean theorem, which is based on triangles, so that's 2D shapes, but uh, it's a little more special than, than what we're going to do for just general other 2D shapes, so it's got its own section. So we're not going to be asking you to memorize these formulas. Everything will be on a PDF that's on Lumen. Uh, you've got your, your formulas, um, so you can just use that. Okay. Uh, we'll do a lot by hand today in this, but we are going to also be putting these formulas into Excel as well. So that's going to be super nice to be able to, to use Excel to do some of these calculations. It's it's a little you know bit of work to get them into Excel the first time, but once a formula is in Excel, it's just there forever for you, and you can just reuse it and use it and use it and use it by just copying and pasting, which is nice. So okay, let's get to it. 2D shapes. So for a two-dimensional shape, we've got two things we're going to measure. The inside of the shape, like the area, and the outside, which is called the perimeter or circumference, depending on what type of shape you're talking about. So here are some example formulas from the, um, the PDF. So we've got the area of a rectangle, the area of a circle, the area of a triangle. And so basically to start out, I'm just going to be asking you, here's the shape use the formula. That's it. So that, that's going to be the start of these. So in example one it says what is the area of a circle of radius four centimeters? So all these problems are going to break down to identify the shape, circle in this case. Okay, then you can just go find the formula. So step one of a problem like this, if you're not really sure where to start, is find the shape then you could say, okay, well, what do I want to know? Well, area, that's one of the common things we want to know. So you just go into your formula sheet and you go, okay, area, circle, area, circle, and then boom, you find it right here. And then so you're just looking for, okay, well, pi is a number, square, okay, that's just the thing I do to a number, times, radius. So I am looking for radius now. So you, you nail, okay, I got this, and then you go back to the problem and say, okay, radius, oh, here it is radius four centimeters. So once you've done that, then all you have to do is write down the formula, which I've, I've got down here, pi times four centimeters squared. And all I did was I took radius here, and I took my four centimeters and plugged it right in. That, to start these problems, and pretty much to finish all of the problems that we'll be doing, it'll come down to just plugging into one of the formulas. That, that's how pretty much all these problems will come down to. So then we do it. We've got pi times and then four centimeters squared. Remember, squaring is just multiplying a number by itself. But of course, you can just type four squared into your calculator. There's a square button, that's fine. And so you'll see I take an extra step here. I don't actually type all this into my calculator first. I just do the actual numbers um, and the squaring and things like that first. I leave pi alone. So what ends up happening here is I get 4 squared is 16, and I just wanted to make a little note, and there's a little note here. So right here, we got to really pay attention, it's very important, we have 4 centimeters being squared. So what do we end up with? We get 4 squared, which is 16, so okay, hopefully not too bad, but then the units also get squared. Don't forget about the units, they also get squared. Because okay, what this is, is really 4 centimeters times 4 centimeters. And so if you end up with 2 copies of centimeters here, you're going to have to end up with 2 in your answer. But and I, that maybe that seems like, oh, this is extra thing. But actually, it's awesome. Because something that we want to keep track of is that when we're using these units, like centimeters, um, inches, feet, meters, all of those types of, of length or distance units. When you see area, you're in a 2D shape and you see area, 
you should be thinking, ooh, I need units squared at the end. There are some funky units that, that don't end up kind of looking like this, but uh, for what we're going to be dealing with, this is what's going to happen. Feet squared is area, miles squared, inches squared, centimeters squared. And so what's kind of neat is at the end of a problem, you can just go to your units and go, okay, I got centimeters, oh, and I got squared. Well, maybe I could have chosen the wrong formula, but at the very least, I at least picked area. So that's good. So this makes me think area, woohoo, I did it. Uh, and you'll notice uh, another thing here is I wrote down everything with the pi intact, and then I said, okay, and I rounded to 0.27. That's what this symbol means, approximately. So if you, if you see that, squiggly lines, it just means it's not a perfect answer, it's approximate. Because pi goes on forever. Okay, so there you go. Plug into the formula, pay attention to your units, and you can round at the end. Okay, so hopefully that's not too bad. Of course, the next step is always then to try to get you with an application problem, right? We love our application problems. So let's read this one. I've recently installed a triangular shaped pool in my backyard. It has a base of 15 feet and a height of 20 feet. What is the area of my pool? Okay, so again, go to the problem. F shape first. Okay, go find the shape. Triangular. Okay, so I got a triangle shaped pool. Okay, so what do I want to know, right? Area is what I want to know. So I just, I would go back to my formula sheet. Eh, what do we got here? Area of a triangle. One half times base times height. So then you just immediately write that down. Area is one half base times height. Just write it down. So then you look at the formula and go, okay, what did Mr. B have to tell me? To, told me? What did Mr. B have to tell me? He had to tell me, well, one half's a number times whatever, base, he's got to tell me that, and height. So I need that. So then you just go to your problem. Oh, and here it is, base of 15, height of 20. What do you do with those? You plug them in. 15 is the base, 20 is the height. We set this up. We put this into our calculator, we just multiply, and we end up getting 150 feet squared. This is area. Remember, area. I need this squared feet here. And hopefully that's not too hard to see with feet times feet. It's feet squared. Okay? So, boom. Got it. Area of the pool. It's triangle. I've got my base. I've got my height. Go. Okay, so you forgot about unit one. I'm bringing it back again. I need to buy a cover for the pool in the winter. It costs $35 per, I didn't forget where I was, per, pausing for dramatic effect, square foot for the cover. So the cover, you can buy it, but it's not just a flat cost for it. It depends on how big the pool is that you need. Okay, so first things first, whenever you're given a problem like this and there's an A and a B, pretty good chance you need your A. So let's just keep that in the back of our mind. We'll see, but pretty good chance. Okay, remember what we can do here. We can always break these types of problems if we're not sure where to start into, you know, what do we know and what do we want? Always. This isn't just math, too. This is all problems. What things do you know? What do you want? Okay. So it says, how much does the cover cost? So we want to know cost, which for us means dollars. I want dollars. Okay. So great. I'm thinking dollars. Great. All right. Well, what do I know? I know $35 per don't forget per means divide. This is a rate, right? We were dealing with rates in unit one. This is a rate. So we have $35 per square foot. And so this square foot is a fancy way to say feet squared. So square foot is our fancy way of just saying these are the units, feet squared. So it's just fancy for 
feet squared units. Okay, so we know that, but wait, you might be looking at this like, oh, darn, I've only got one thing I know. I need two things. Well, what did we have in A? We got something in A. We know the area of the pool, right, that top of the pool is 150 feet squared. So we know this. We know 150 feet squared is the area. So then at this point, this is just like a unit one problem. So go at it like that. If you're not sure what to do, just try something. So I think a common thing to try is to take your two knowns and multiply them. Nothing wrong with trying that, so let's try it. 35, I'm just gonna move the units to the side. Dollars per foot squared, okay, times, I've got 150 feet squared. All right, so remember, you set something up like this. Ooh, I don't know if I got this right. Let the units help you figure it out. So, we go to our units. We got dollars on top. All right, okay, so is there any other dollars? Nope. So then, I'll have dollars on top at the end. So, so okay, I mean, that, that's pretty good, units-wise. I wanted dollars, right? So that, that's looking good. All right, but I see all these feet squared. What's going on with that? Well, just check it out. I've got feet squared on the bottom to start, but then I've got a feet squared on top, too. We know that that means they'll cancel. I'll just be left with dollars. We've done it. We guessed correctly on how to combine these things. So once you've done that unit check, remember, once you've done the unit check, you can then multiply your numbers and you end up getting, let's bring over our little calculator, 35 times 150 equals 5,250. Wow. I hope it's a very nice cover, because that is a sweet little chunk of change there. Maybe not. I don't own a pool. Maybe that is reasonable. So it costs you $5,250 to buy your pool cover. There you go. So this is why it's so important. I kept saying, you got to go back to Unit 1, things you messed up, things I gave you... Um, you know, corrections on ideas about. We've got to get that down because everything in this class just keeps building. We keep using it. We keep using it, okay? So it's very important. All these things are playing together. We need, we need them all. Okay, so what's next? Well, we got 3D shapes. So 3D shapes, it's kind of neat. There's still two things we want. They just change a little. Inside, we still want inside, so that's kind of neat because it's just like the 2D, but now the inside is called volume. All right, no longer area, now it's a volume. Okay, and then now the outside, we call that the surface area. All right, so I didn't put all of them here, I just copied in the volumes section. All right, so we've got some, some fun little, uh, you know, different shapes here that we can play with. Okay. So volume inside, surface area outside. Again, these formulas are a little bigger, but they don't bite, same thing. I give you some numbers, you plug them in. You just have to figure out which one to use when. Which in the applications, that could be a little tough, but overall, that's, that's the process. So example three, what is the volume of a cone with radius four inches and height six inches? So. Again, cone, okay, we gotta go find cone. Volume was asked for. Okay, let's go find volume. I go under volumes in my PDF, I find cone, and we got it, right there. So then I just copy this down on my paper. There it is, so I've copied that formula down. And then I say, okay, what does Mr. B need to tell me? He's gotta tell me radius and he's gotta tell me height. So, okay, okay, let's go back to the problem. Oh, radius is four inches. Awesome. Height is six inches. Got it. That's it. Once you grab those, you plug them into the equation. Okay. 
Now, we got to be a little careful with these units, right? And everything that's going on here. Remember, this 4 is being squared. Important. Don't forget, don't lose track of that. This 4 is being squared. And so, when you would go to simplify this, remember, it would be 1 3rd pi 16 inches squared times 6 inches. So, you do not have to take that extra step. You know, you could plug this into a calculator all in one go. That's fine. Just don't forget this square, this 2, it's like it hits both of these. It hits this one and it hits this one. And then when it all comes down to it, I, I end up with inches, two of them, he, two of them right here, and then one here. And so all together, I end up with inches cubed. And so that is a pattern that we can specifically call out. When we're talking volume, okay, so we gotta be a little careful. This is not always true, right? Think about um, like cooking. You're, you're constantly dealing with volumes of things, yet you don't necessarily use units that have, you know, cubed, right? You use other units that are designed to talk about volume without having to deal with this. So, but when we're playing around here with these things, volume, we are often looking for units cubed. This is like the big thing here is that whatever units, inches, feet, miles, meters, centimeters, whatever, we're looking for cubed. So once you get your answer, if you don't end up with something cubed, you probably mess something up somewhere. So go back and look. Okay, so that's my little units reminder. But we can also do application problems. So example four, Daisy loves cake. In her never ending quest for more cake, Daisy finds a rectangular prism shaped cake. So just like a box uh, with a height of seven inches, length of 15 inches and width of 10 inches. So I promised you a picture. So we have a cake. This is not going to look like a very edible cake, unfortunately, but it will look like a rectangular prism nonetheless. There we go. So we've got our rectangular prism. So okay, height seven inches. All right. Whenever you're you're drawing a picture like this, you don't have to worry necessarily in the picture about using the units, but you know, if you want to, that's fine. Uh, length would be 15 and 10. So maybe this isn't to scale, that's fine. But we've got it. Okay. So find the volume of the cake. So again, we want volume. We're told it's this rectangular prism or box. So we go back up. Da, 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 da. Oh, there it is, right at the top. Length times width times height. So we go down here. Da, 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 da. And we got it, length times width times height. So we go back to the problem. All right, we need three things in this equation. So let's look, seven inches of my height, length is 15, width is 10. So all you gotta do is plug, plug, plug. All right, then we multiply away, just double checking here right at the end, right? We wanna double check here at the end that we get inches cubed because it's volume, and we do, and so we're feeling pretty good. This cake has 1,050 inches cubed of volume. All right, so you might be like, oh, this is not, this is a piece of cake. <laughs> but we can, we can now bring in more unit one stuff. Let's look at B. Daisy finds a new cake that is 20% wider calculate the volume of the new cake. Uh -huh. So what does it mean to be 20% wider? So let's write down what we know from the previous cake. We know the height. So this is the previous cake. The height is 10 inches. Okay, we know the length is seven inches. Now the width, that was 15 inches, so this is the old cake. But what's happened? Let's reread the problem. There's a new cake in town, and it's 20% wider. Okay, so let's think about that. What does that mean? It means the width got bigger, 20% wider. That means bigger. So what are we doing? Percent increase. Woohoo! We got our percent increase. 
So let's do it. I've got 15 inches of width and I want to increase by 20%. So again, multiple ways of doing this. I know you guys like your, your ways, all these different ways, that's fine. Uh, I'm gonna show you the way that I'm just more comfortable with, but I mean, comfortable with all, it's just kind of the one that I, I like going to. And so the new width is equal to your old width times, and then in this case, we're going up is increase by 20%, so I can multiply by 1.20. Okay, so then don't forget, you got a little calculator here. Let's do it. 15 times 1.2 equals 18. So we end up getting 18 inches for our new width. All right, so what do we do? Well, what is the question asking for? Calculate the volume of the new cake. So we still need to do the volume the cake overall shape hasn't changed, just the size. So it's still a rectangular prism. So it's still length times width times height. Length times width, it's the new width times height. Okay, let's throw that in our trusty calculator. Seven times 18 times 10. 7 times 18 times 10. Okay, that's 1260. We end up getting 1260 inches cubed of volume. And there we go. Now, um, that's it. Interesting, hopefully, kind of a neat idea. Uh, we've just applied percentages to it. It's not like, you know, it made the problem more complicated. It was just an extra step. And that's the way you should think of this is each of these things we're learning, you can think of as just another step in a process. And so we, it's like just pieces. We can add new pieces to each problem. And every time we learn something new, it's a new piece we can add to a problem, a new thing we can solve. Okay, so lastly, we are at the Pythagorean theorem. So this is a special theorem that just happens to come up so frequently in so many different places that it's important for you to see it and just play with it a little bit. Uh, so this comes up whenever you have a right triangle. So right triangle, let me just point to this triangle that's down here. A right triangle is a triangle that has a 90 degree angle. So you're just looking for a triangle that has this kind of perfect sharp corner in it. This is 90 degrees right there. All right? Not every triangle looks like this, but when, when they do, uh, they're really nice to work with. So what's the formula? Well, for one of these general triangles, so I'll do another one here so I can just kind of write out the, the sides. We've got side length A, B, and C. This formula connects all the sides. Okay, so those side lengths, A, B, and C, are all connected together using this formula. Pretty amazing. So how do we use it? Well, it's like any other formula. You're going to use it by me giving you some information, you plugging it in, and being left with one unknown that you have to solve for. I will say, maybe you're looking at this with those squares and kind of being like, oh, what's happening with that? It's a little tougher. This is the only situation where, you know, this is coming up with this, this square. And I'll show you how to do it. It's not too bad. Uh, and I'll show you how to do it in the calculator. Although you might have to search around your calculator for the right button. So let's just get into an example. Example five. Find the missing side length in the following triangle. So... Here's my triangle. I know two sides, I don't know the other. This is ripe for the Pythagorean theorem. I write it down, okay? Then I go to my triangle and I say, okay, well, A, I don't know A, so I'll leave it. B, oh yeah, that's four, okay, plug it in. C, this long one that's across, so C is always the one that's across from the 90 degrees, that's five. Okay, I've plugged in. 
Now all I have to do is get A by itself. First step to get A by itself, well, I need to get rid of this 4 squared, so I subtract it on both sides. That leads me here. Okay. Now I can just do a little bit of calculation here. This is a squared equals, and if I do 5 squared minus 4 squared, I'm going to end up with 9. Sorry, that looks a little bit like an A, right? Let me make it a little bit taller. Oh, I'm only making it worse. You guys all get it, it's 9. Okay, now at this point, you might not be comfortable here. That's okay. It's kind of neat. I mean, maybe you're not going to find it neat. But every one of these, or not every, but most of these things, math things we do, always have an opposite. And so I'm not going to go too crazy into this, but just, you know, so you're aware kind of what's going on. You know, all these math things you do, like adding, well, adding has an opposite, subtraction. What do I mean by opposite? I mean, you can do one than the other, and they, you can think they cancel each other out. I can go up, then I can go down, and it's like I didn't do anything. Same with multiplying and dividing. I can multiply by a number, I divide by that number, and it's like I didn't do anything. Well, it's not 100% the same thing exactly with this next case, but it's pretty similar. You notice this is a squared, so something squared. Well, there is a way to kind of try to undo that, similar to plus and minus times divide, and that's called the square root. Square root. Applying this will undo the square. So I'll just show you what that looks like, and then we'll do it in the calculator, and you'll just calculator, calculator, calculator. You don't have to think too much about this. So we square root. Now, I'm being very um, not great with this because there's more to it than this, what's going on here. But in terms of what we will be doing, this is okay. And so you can think of these as canceling, square root and square cancel. And what you'll end up being left with is A equals, and then if you type in square root of 9 into your calculator, so for me, see the square root button here. So for my calculator, I would write 9 square root. No, I wouldn't. I would write square root 9. See how it opened a parentheses? Let me just close it off. I get 3. Whoops. A equals 3. Okay. So that side length was 3. I've done it. Now, some of you who are more comfortable with squares and square roots probably were very upset by the line I just did above, and I will just make a comment that this process actually gives you two answers, which is kind of cool. Uh, so just off to the side here, and you, you, this is not something you have to think about, but this equation actually has two answers. A equals 3, which we just found. 3 squared is 9, right? Check it. 3 squared equals 9, awesome. But also, a equals negative 3 is also an answer. Put that in your calculator. Also 9. Here's the thing. We're talking about side lengths, lengths of a triangle. There's no such thing as a negative length of a triangle. So we don't care about this one. And quite often with what we're doing, especially if you're using the Pythagorean theorem, you do not care about this negative number. And so this process is fine. It may not be mathematically 100% uh, gravy, but for our purposes, it's okay. All right? So there you go. You've got it. All right. So what, what does it look like to use this? Well. Example 6, and I'm going to give myself some more room here. Example 6 says a ladder is resting against a wall. So first things first, if there's no picture, draw one for yourself. Here's a wall. Wow, very nice wall. Okay, it says a ladder is resting against it. The base of the ladder, so the bottom, is 5 feet from the wall. So let's draw that. 5 feet. Okay. Here's my ladder. 
We'll give it a ladder. We'll make the ladder green. Here's my ladder, okay, the base. Okay, and then it says the top of the ladder rests 10 feet up the wall. Okay, so that means that the ladder's resting like this. It hits the wall. And we've been told that this is 10 feet. Okay. All right, so question, how long is the ladder? Well, that's this. I just need to find that one. This is a right triangle. If I make this two blue sides and the green, if I make that a little triangle, it'll stop here. We don't care about that rest of the wall. This is a triangle. It's a right triangle. So I use the Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Okay, well, I've got A is 10, B is 5, and C I don't know. This one, a little bit easier than the last one. No algebra moving around, so that's not too bad. So I have to just do 10 squared plus 5 squared. That would be 125 equals C squared. And then what do I do? Remember, all you got to do is square root. Okay. So let's do it. Square root 125. And we get 11.18. So we'll round it two decimal places, which is about 11.18. About C. And what did I forget? I'm going to pretend I did this on purpose, even though I didn't. I forgot my units. C is about 11.18 feet. Okay. So we've got it. Boom. So that was that's it for uh, for this study guide and things that you need to know.